Hi, I'm Olivia. Before I continue, please like and subscribe to hear more stories like mine. I'm a 32-year-old financial analyst living in Chicago. For the past five years, I've been married to Derek, a 35-year-old real estate agent with a smile that could charm the pants off a statue. When we first met, his spontaneity was a breath of fresh air in my structured world. Now? Well, let's just say it's causing some waves. Olivia, you won't believe the deal I just closed. Derek bursts through the door, interrupting my spreadsheet focus. I spin in my chair, forcing a smile. That's great, honey. Another big commission? You know it, babe. We should celebrate. I hesitate, thinking about our savings account. Maybe we could just have a nice dinner at home? I was thinking about our dream house fund. Derek's enthusiasm deflates a bit. Always the responsible one, huh? Before I can respond, my phone buzzes. It's my best friend, Samantha. Sorry, I should take this, I tell Derek. Hey, Sam, what's up? I step into the other room. Olivia, you free for drinks tonight? I need some girl time. I glance at Derek, who's already glued to his phone. Actually, yeah, I could use a break. Later at the bar, Samantha, a recently divorced lawyer, listens as I vent. I don't know, Sam. Lately, Derek's been... different. Late nights, secretive phone calls. I'm probably just paranoid, right? Samantha raises an eyebrow. Trust your gut, Liv. You're too smart to ignore red flags. I sigh, stirring my drink. Maybe you're right. It's just... We've been saving for so long. This house means everything to me. And to Derek? I pause, realizing I'm not sure anymore. The next day, we're having dinner with Derek's brother Jack and his wife Emily. The conversation flows easily, but I can't shake this uneasy feeling. So, Derek, Jack grins. How's that new project going? Derek shoots his brother a look I can't quite read. Great, really great. Hey, who wants another round? As Derek heads to the kitchen, Emily leans in. Everything okay, Olivia? You seem distracted. I force a smile. Just work stress. You know how it is. But it's more than that. Derek's been coming home later and later, always with excuses about client meetings or networking events. I want to believe him, but something doesn't add up. That night, as Derek snores softly beside me, I stare at the ceiling, my mind racing. We've always been a team, working towards our goals together. The house fund, our future family. These were our shared dreams. But lately, it feels like I'm the only one still rowing. I roll over, watching Derek's peaceful face in the dim light. What aren't you telling me, Derek? And why do I feel like our smooth sailing is about to hit some seriously rocky waters? It's a quiet Saturday morning when I stumble upon the credit card statements. My coffee goes cold as I stare at the numbers, disbelief turning to anger. Marina fees? Boat supplies? What the hell? When Derek saunters in, I'm ready. What's this? I shove the statement at him. He freezes, then tries to laugh it off. Oh, that? It's nothing, babe. Nothing? There's thousands of dollars here, Derek. He sighs, running a hand through his hair. Okay, look, I was going to surprise you, but I bought a boat. My jaw drops. A boat? Are you kidding me? It's an investment opportunity, Liv. We could rent it out, start a charter business. I can't believe what I'm hearing. We're saving for a house, Derek. Our future. And you just decided to blow it all on a boat? Come on, don't be like that. This could be huge for us. Us? You didn't even ask me. Derek's tone shifts, his voice lowering. I thought you'd be supportive. Don't you trust me? I feel my resolve weakening. Of course I trust you, but... But what? You always said you loved my ambition. Now I'm following my dreams and you're shutting me down? I shake my head, trying to clear it. This isn't about dreams, Derek. It's about our financial stability. Fine, he snaps. If you're so worried about money, why don't you pick up some overtime? The marina fees aren't going to pay themselves. I stare at him, shocked. Are you serious right now? He storms out, leaving me reeling. I immediately call Samantha. He did what? She exclaims when I tell her. 
I don't know what to do, Sam. This isn't like him. Liv, honey, you need to dig deeper. This doesn't add up. Following her advice, I start investigating. What I find makes me sick. Not only are there marina fees, but there are also charges for expensive upgrades, fuel, and... Champagne? When Derek gets home, I confront him again. Who exactly are you entertaining on this boat? Clients, Olivia. It's for work. Right. And I suppose the luxury lingerie charge is for work, too? He pales. That... that was supposed to be a surprise for you. I laugh bitterly. Funny, I don't remember the last time you even touched me. Derek's demeanor changes, his voice becoming pleading. Baby, I'm sorry. I got carried away. But think about it. If we both put in a little extra work, we could make this boat thing really profitable. Extra work? You mean me working overtime to cover your impulse purchase? It's not an impulse purchase. It's an investment in our future. I feel my blood boiling. Our future was supposed to be a house, Derek. Remember that? We can have both. Why are you being so negative? Negative? You lied to me, spent our savings, and now you're trying to make me feel bad for being upset? Derek's face hardens. You know what? Fine. If you can't see the potential in this, that's your problem. I'm going out. As he slams the door, I sink to the floor, tears streaming down my face. How did we get here? I love Derek, or at least, I thought I did. But now? Now I'm not sure of anything. That night, as Derek sleeps soundly beside me, I lie awake, my mind a storm of emotions. The man I married, the one who promised to build a life with me, seems like a stranger now. I think about our dreams, our plans, the house we were supposed to build together. Now, instead of a foundation, we have a boat. A boat that's quickly becoming a symbol of everything wrong in our marriage. As the first light of dawn creeps through our window, I make a decision. I won't let this go. Whatever Derek's hiding, whatever game he's playing, I'm going to find out. And I'm going to fight for the future I thought we both wanted. I'm sitting in a dimly lit cafe, my hands shaking as I meet with the private investigator Samantha recommended. Find out everything, I tell him, sliding over an envelope of cash. A week later, my world implodes. The PI's report reveals Derek's been having an affair with a 24-year-old named Amber, whom he met at the marina. There are photos of them on the boat, looking cozy and carefree with my hard-earned money. But it gets worse. Derek's been using our joint savings for more than just boat upgrades. Designer clothes, fancy restaurants, weekend getaways, all with Amber. And then there's the gambling. Apparently, our boat hosts high-stakes poker games, and Derek's in deep. I confront Derek that night. Who's Amber? He freezes. What are you talking about? Don't lie to me, Derek. I know everything. His face crumples. Olivia, I can explain. Explain what? The affair? The gambling? How you've been pissing away our future? It's not what you think. It's exactly what I think. How could you do this to us? He tries to grab my hand. Baby, please, we can work this out. I jerk away. Don't touch me. I want you out. Now. As Derek packs a bag, my phone buzzes. It's Emily, Jack's wife. Can we meet? It's important. At a nearby park, Emily looks nervous. Olivia, I, I think Jack's involved in Derek's mess. My stomach drops. What do you mean? I overheard him on the phone. He knows about the affair, the gambling. He's been covering for Derek. I feel sick. Emily, I'm so sorry. She squares her shoulders. Don't be. We're going to make them pay. Over the next few days, Emily and I become amateur detectives. We dig through bank statements, follow our husbands, and piece together the extent of their deception. We need to expose them, Emily says one night over wine. Not just to us, but to everyone. An idea forms. What if we throw a party? On the boat? Emily's eyes light up. A party where everything comes to light. We spend hours planning our sting operation. Guest lists are made, evidence is compiled, and a script is written. We're going to expose Derek and Jack in front of everyone they know. The night before the party, 
I lie awake, rehearsing what I'll say. I think about the future I thought I'd have, the dreams that have turned to ash. But from those ashes, a new Olivia is rising, stronger, wiser, and out for justice. Tomorrow, Derek's perfect life will come crashing down, and I'll be there to watch it burn. The day of the party arrives, and I'm a bundle of nerves. I've spent the last week pretending to accept Derek's ridiculous demands, playing the role of the supportive wife. You're right, honey, I told him yesterday. This boat could be a great opportunity for us. He bought it hook, line, and sinker. Now, as guests start to arrive on the boat, I plaster on a fake smile. Welcome. So glad you could make it to Derek's surprise party. Derek looks genuinely shocked when he arrives. Babe, what's all this? I kiss his cheek, tasting bile. Just wanted to celebrate your new venture, honey. As the party gets into full swing, I catch Emily's eye. It's time. I clink my glass, calling for attention. Everyone, I have an announcement to make. Derek beams, clearly expecting praise. He's in for a rude awakening. I want to thank you all for coming to celebrate my husband's investment. I pause, letting the sarcasm sink in. But there's more to celebrate than just a boat. I start projecting financial records onto a screen. Let's talk about where the money for this boat really came from. Derek's face drains of color. Olivia, what are you doing? I ignore him. Our life savings, money earmarked for our future home. But wait, there's more. Emily steps up, adding her voice to mine. We take turns revealing the sordid details. The affair, the gambling, Jack's complicity. The crowd gasps as Amber, Derek's mistress, stumbles in, clearly drunk. Derek, baby, I thought this was our private party. The look on Derek's face is priceless. Amber, what the hell? She giggles, oblivious. Oops, did I crash your other wife's party? The room erupts in chaos. Derek and Jack try to defend themselves, but the evidence is damning. I lock eyes with Derek. I want a divorce. He lunges for me, but our friends hold him back. You can't do this to me. Watch me, I spit back. The aftermath is swift and brutal. Derek's firm fires him the next day. Jack's not far behind. Emily files for divorce, and I hear Jack's been blacklisted in his industry. As for me? I walk away with my head held high. One year later, I'm standing on the balcony of my new beachfront home, watching the sunset. The promotion I got after focusing on my career has paid off handsomely. The last rays of sunlight glint off the waves, and I take a deep breath of salty air. This is what freedom tastes like. This is what it feels like to reclaim your life. I raise my glass to the horizon. Here's to new beginnings, I whisper. The story has come to an end. Now, I have a question for you. If you discovered your partner had betrayed you like Derek betrayed Olivia, would you expose them publicly as she did or handle it privately? What do you think are the moral implications of public humiliation as a form of revenge? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Your experiences and opinions could help others facing similar situations. If you enjoyed Olivia's journey of resilience and revenge, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more gripping stories of triumph over betrayal. Your support helps us bring more content like this to light. Thanks for watching, and we can't wait to hear your perspective.